everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. This video is gonna be five beauty products, makeup products that I've changed my mind about. Good and bad. So maybe I started out liking it and then after a while I just didn't really like it so much or I didn't like it at first. Maybe I even tried it several times and I decided to retry it and ended up really liking the product. I have no qualms coming back here and telling you guys if I was wrong or if I changed my mind about something. So that is what this video is gonna be about today. I've seen this concept on other people's channels before and I've been wanting to do it for a long time. I wanna say almost a year and it's just been on my to-do list and it never got done. So I'm really excited to be doing it today. I'm also really excited because it's a collab with my good friend, Kate the Great Beauty. Some of you may be following her already. I shouted her out. In one of my monthly favorites videos, I think it was the second one where I started shouting out smaller creators that I just wanted to focus on. The first time I came across her channel, I was immediately captivated by her content. And not just her content, her personality, her demeanor, just the way she engages with the camera, her audience, she's hilarious. I mean, absolutely hysterical to watch. Her editing is really great, really on point. It just fits with the concept of her videos. And that was the other thing that really intrigued me about her channel initially was that her whole concept was different than any I had ever seen before. She incorporates an adult beverage in with whatever video she's doing, which actually takes a lot more time and creativity than you would even realize. Her videos are just so much fun to watch and you do get a lot out of them at the same time. And I really appreciate watching channels like that. And here we are several months after I first discovered her channel. And over that time, we've just become really great friends. We communicate in some former fashion every single day. And I'm super appreciative of her just as a person. She's a very genuine person. And I'm just really, really happy to say that she's become a dear close friend of mine. So I'm happy to be collaborating with her and happy that we can share this content with you together today. So if you are not familiar with Kate, definitely check her video out after you finish this one. Tell her I sent you, subscribe to her. I really think you guys will value and love her and her content as much as I do. And if you are new to me and here from Kate's channel, or if you just stumbled across this video, I'd love it if you'd hit the subscribe button today and become a part of the family. With that said, let's get started. I have no order. I am just going to start with the first product I see. So this is a product that I did not like at all. So it's actually kind of a surprise. It's even in this video because I was planning on decluttering this, throwing it away, and I decided to give it another shot. Now that I have incorporated some different primers and different powders, I thought, you know, I'll just give this another go. And I'm really, really glad that I did. This is the Hourglass Illusion Hyaluronic Skin Tint. I am in the shade Nude. If you need any of my foundation shades, I do link them down below over on my blog. So I'll have all those listed for you. For a skin tint, this is a pretty thick, moussey product. It's not as runny as a lot of the skin tints that you see. I mean, it doesn't move at all. You can see on the back of my hand. When I first used it, I just felt like it may be kind of shiny pretty quickly and it caught on some dry patches and it just, kind of wore off pretty quickly. So I decided to try it in a slightly different way and try it with primers and powders that I was using now versus then, because I feel like I've found some really good primers and powders, and I think that's part of it, and all of that is very individual for each person. But I decided to retry it with my Hourglass Veil Primer, which I actually used in this foundation road test, but I tried it with the Touch and Soul No Problem Primer that I have been loving. But I also wanted to try it with the two powders that I've been loving so much lately, and that's the Lancome Long Time No Shine and the Stila one. I can't remember the name, it's in the tube. I don't really like the spray mechanism of the powder, but I love the powder itself. But I also decided to apply this with a dry beauty blender because since doing that video, I have been applying some of the thinner, more skin-like 
foundations that don't really build that much with dry beauty blenders because I don't always like going in with my fingers because that can take a long time. Damn beauty blenders shear them out more than they already are. I went in with a dry beauty blender and I just layered where I needed it with my fingers. It looked really, really pretty and I've worn it that way several times since. It looks beautiful on the skin. It lasts a long time with the primers and powders that I just mentioned. It's a really nice product and I get now why so many people say they love it. So this is a product that I actually decided to keep when I was about to toss it. So I'm glad I decided to retry it. I do that a lot with products. Once I'm getting ready to purge them out, I'll give them another go. And this one actually worked for me. So sticking with the face category, I'm gonna go ahead and mention the NARS Soft Matte Complete Concealer. I think that's the official name of this. I'm in the shade Canal. I was looking for an under eye concealer and I kept hearing people really like it for their under eyes and I hated it. I thought it was too dry. I was planning on throwing it out and I just, I don't know, I just didn't like it. For my face, I'd always used a tube concealer, a concealer in a tube, and that always worked really well for me. I don't know what made me try this. You can see now how dilapidated that looks in the pot from me sticking my brush in it because this is pretty much my daily face concealer. I love this to conceal any imperfections that I have on my face. I think I've heard everyone using it for their under eye area and it was just too drying for me under my eyes. So on my face, it never looks heavy, it never looks cakey, it sets well, it lasts all day. You know sometimes when you set concealer with a powder, it can take off some of that coverage when you use your sponge or a brush or whatever you set that powder with. This stays in place, but it never looks like you're wearing concealer. It just looks like your skin. And that probably is because it has a soft matte appearance. I also appreciate the fact that it is in this acrylic pot because I can customize the coverage so much better than if it's in a bullet or a squeezy tube. I can just get as little or as much on a brush as I want. So I love this. I went from really not liking this. Now it is my daily concealer. I'm going to be in the minority on this one. I went from really liking this product quite a bit to one day realizing it was more trouble than what I wanted to spend for this type of product and then I felt like I just got better results with other products and they looked better. So this is the MAC Paint Pot in Soft Ochre. I use this as an eyeshadow primer before I go in with eyeshadow. That's how a lot of people use this product. I don't know if it's my age, if it's my eyes, or if I have the most finicky eyelids on the planet. I'm showing you this, but it's all dried out, so excuse the um, presentation here, even though the middle is still quite creamy. When I would apply this, it would always take a little bit to blend out and kind of get it into place. And I still had to set it with powder or else it would crease a little bit. And I would always end up having one eyelid that looked a little bit dry underneath and one eyelid that looked fine, usually. Sometimes they would both look a little dry, but I always had one that looked a little bit just kind of flaky or something underneath. But I would keep using it because by the time I put my eyeshadow on over it, it usually ended up fine. So then I started messing around with other eye primers and I was realizing, you know, it doesn't take me as long to use other eyeshadow primers because I don't have to press and blend and press and blend and press and blend. I can still conceal my eyelids just fine. I can use a concealer over it or I can just use a neutral eyeshadow. And I never get that dry look with other eyeshadow primers. I don't know what this is that somehow makes my oily eyelids look dry because I cannot not set my eyeshadow primer. I have to, I have to set it with some kind of translucent powder or I will crease, yet this makes me look dry. So it was like I used it and I liked it because I do feel like it's bulletproof and I do feel like it conceals well, but then I realized there are just so many products out there that essentially perform the same way, but with less trouble and they just look better. So this next products actually more of a category. I started to talk about cream blushes because I just remember years ago I tried cream blushes 
and they were just so tacky and sticky on my skin. I have oily combination skin and I just always felt like they kind of slid off on me kind of quickly and I don't know, I just couldn't get on board with them at all and I didn't even want to try them. And just over the past year or so, I've really grown to love cream blushes. I'm going to list down below some cream products that I really enjoy just to give you guys a grasp because I am over 40 so those tend to look really nice on my skin that's not you know 20 25 anymore but I don't want them to slide off either. I didn't want to just leave it at cream blushes though because the whole category of cream products it's just a whole new world for me, really. So bronzers, contour, highlighters. Again, I'm gonna leave products that I enjoy down below or my favorite, my top ones down below. Why this category came to mind for me at all is because of the Glossier Cloud Paints and then the NARS Liquid Blushes. I just love these products along with various other cream highlighters, bronzers, contours that I use. I would say on a semi-regular basis, I feel like cream product application takes a little bit longer for me than just dusting on powder products. I did that reverse foundation video and I really, really love doing that too. It just looks really nice. I do go heavier handed than I did in that video because that was the first time I ever did it. It just gives such a natural, nice, beautiful look to the skin and I really did not like it <laughs> way back then and I'm actually shocked I even tried it at all. And here I am with, you know, a small acrylic drawer full of cream and liquid products that I do reach for regularly that I think are really great. And I'm so glad that I rediscovered in a good way. I'm actually really, really surprised by this last one myself. You might be too, because some of you may have been with me back when I did not like this product. I said that I did not like this product at all. I didn't get the hype because everybody loves it and I thought it was terrible. And this is the Oribe Dry Texturizing Spray. I am not sure what has happened between then and now because at the time I said I used a little, I used a lot, and no matter what, it just left my hair gummy and sticky and it weighed my hair down completely and I thought it was terrible. So cut to, I don't know, a couple months ago, I had this nearly full can and I thought, all right, I'm going to try this again. I feel with this many people loving a product, it just might be me that is doing something wrong. So I pulled it back out and I used the most minimal amount of product and it's really good. It's, it's good. <laughs> so what I found is that when I thought I was using a minimal amount of product, I really wasn't using as small of an amount as I thought I was and I really, really needed to use even less and this can is empty now i used the rest of it this morning and i actually didn't even get to put as much in my hair as i wanted to i used about half of what i normally do because i ran out but it does give my hair volume and texture without it feeling gummy if i use the right amount if i go overboard it is just too heavy but the trick is using a small amount. It smells good. It really is just a beautiful product. Now this is pricey, but I feel like because I use so much less of this than I do any of my other texturizing sprays, it might not be as pricey as what I think it is. So I'm eating my words on this because it's really, really, really good. Be sure and leave me any products that you've changed your mind on about down below. I can't wait to see those. If you're not subscribed to my channel, please hit that subscribe button. I would love to have you here on a regular basis and go check out Kate's video because I know she's got some great products in it as well. I can't wait to see what she has to show us that she has either loved or not liked and has changed her mind on as well. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you in my next video. Bye-bye.